Our next speaker will be Igor Chemisov and the moderator of the stream, Mariana Petrova. Hi, guys. Welcome to Java on Conference. <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, hi, folks. So we ask mostly everyone, every speaker, some of them refuse to answer this question, but still, uh, what your talk would be about? Maybe you can give us some spoilers or for whom this talk should be interesting and useful. So uh, the spoke will be about uh, amazing and uh, slightly fantasy uh, things. I will spoke about Spock. Uh, it's a fictional character from uh, Star Trek Sega. And uh, I hope uh, some one of you watched this Sega. I did it. <laughs> so you can uh, you can uh, write in chat if you uh, watch this Sega. Just uh, type plus. I would like to yeah, see how yeah, many guys, people. Just just post in chat if you watch Star Wars, the old one, the new one, the J.J. Abrams films, low, even Lower Decks from Amazon. Basically, I haven't watched Star Wars on the J.J. Abrams films, but I watched Lower Decks and I really love this series. This is just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So this would be about Spoke uh, framework, but uh, for our audience, for just programmers in Java, how can this uh, framework would be useful in their day-to-day -day work? Uh, it's uh, used uh, to write test from unit test to UI test, and uh, it's uh, have revolutionary new approach. And uh, in general, it saves about 40% uh, of time because uh, code is smaller. And on the other side, uh, it's very big um, feature. The tests are very clear and very readable and can be treated as a documentation. Okay, so guys, uh, I suppose this could be really helpful. Mariana, maybe you can tell us more about this framework or about the talk we would hear soon. Uh, I would say it's a really interesting framework and um, we're gonna talk about what it makes it uh, stand out the crowd and uh, all about uh, its um, fantastic features. And um, I love it. Um, by default, because it's called by Spock, my favorite character <laughs> from Star Trek. So, and I do believe uh, Igor is uh, really a um, professional developer and uh, would uh, tell us uh, everything and uh, a little bit more about this framework. It's like live long and prosper, right? <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, and I saw we have some comments in the in the chat on YouTube as well, guys. Uh, send this. Uh, I suppose it's something like this in the symbols. So yeah, it, it looks basically like like the like 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 the Spock sign. Uh, so okay. Uh, I think this would be like regular question, but I have to ask it as we have a test topic on the conference, right? So, uh, okay, this would be a really strange question, but still, how many tests is enough for projects? <laughs> what do you think guys about that? Uh, I work in it's project. It's a rhetoric as, question. Yeah, rhetoric question. In mm -hmm. last project I worked, it has uh, only one test uh, on the uh, thousand of classes, and uh, this test state that true is true, and it was the only test. Uh, and we all know that it's not uh, uh, the truth, because uh, in vino veritas, if you can ask every stranger, he can ask this okay you know i have a much more strange case in my, one of the project i worked on so i came to the project and i had to look in the test and i was looking at the test like hmm, they look a bit strange so what guys basically do they take the method on this of the service mock it with mokito uh, say like, like if this method will be called the result should be then and then make assert that this mocked method returned the result they mocked so it's like Okay, you basically test Makito. This is valid test for Makito, but not for our project. How can we, <laughs> how can we work with that? Uh, uh, yeah, but still, coming back to my question, of course, it's a rhetorical one, but still, um, maybe there is some measurement, like how you measure the, the tests are enough. If everything is covered, for example, or if you uh, ex 
in addition to coverage made a test for uh, performance for example or in addition to that you made like even some integration tests with other components so when you say when you think and feel that you covered uh, your project enough uh, I think the main mistake the all developer uh, do they trying to test uh, classes method or, or code and it is totally wrong from my point of view you have described behavior of the system and uh, if you test uh, cover the behavior behavior of the system it is good test and this is enough uh, if you go to take uh, uh, hundred percent code coverage you don't need to spend the time because uh, several automated generated test generator on the market you can run it and it generate the test like uh, many of developer already uh, create by hand so the uh, hundred percent generate is just a metric it's not related to code quality of, and uh, to quality of the test but uh, <laughs> it's my point of view i, I think yeah, that sure. uh, we, we have to cover the behavior of the system it's slightly, slightly different than uh, the coverage for the code uh okay guys uh, so just just a reminder sorry marian just a small reminder if you have any questions to the speaker you may ask them here in the chat uh in uh on youtube you may ask them in the chat uh on we are community platform and also you may ask them in discord we will monitor the chat uh and ask your questions yes marian please okay i would say that uh my questions will be after uh, the talk and I believe we have uh, a really big uh, theme. Um, a lot of questions are covered in this uh, topic, so I would uh, like uh, to start. And okay. All questions will be after. Uh, okay, sure. Just before we start, last thing. So, guys, again, as a reminder, we have three chats where you can post your questions. So, this is the YouTube chat the chat on discord you will find there the inside purple stream talks the chat which calls unit tests as specification we monitor this and we will ask the questions from it and also on we are community platform we had a chat so you may pass your questions there we try to have a look uh, on all the chats and ask all the questions to our speakers uh saying that i think yes we may move to the talk so on the stage you got chemisa from i suppose snowy riga right <laughs> yes you're, you're right i'm from latvia uh, actually i'm um, in uh, Yurmala now it's nearby riga okay uh, how, how is the weather in Yurmala? Sorry, sorry for interrupting your talk, but still, like, is it snowy there? Yes, it's perfectly snowy. I, I very uh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit jealous. I miss snow a bit here in Malaga. We don't have it. Uh, okay, so coming to the talk, Igor Chemisov from Riga, unit test as a specification. Floor is yours. Good luck. Okay, thank Good you. Good luck, Igor. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, hello again, folks. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, to our presentation. Uh, my name is Yegor Chemisov, and I am a software engineer. I joined EPAM system in August. Before that, I worked at Accenture for two years as a system analyst in, in the SAP division. I'm an Oracle certified professional, Java 11, a mentor at exorcism.org, and uh, an author of several educational projects. In this presentation, I will discuss my experience using the Spoke framework to write specification for Java applications. According to Peter Niederweiser, the framework developer, Spoke is a blend of specification and mock. It may even be true, just in case you haven't uh, seen the Star Trek saga, I put a photo of the two main characters, uh, characters uh, on the slide. On the left is Captain Kirk, and to his right is uh, scientist officer Spock, half Terran, half Vulcan. Uh, here is our agenda for our presentation. Uh, the main uh, subject uh, test as documentation uh, I told after 
uh, introduction introduction to the Spock framework as a test uh, framework. And uh, also we have some optional topics. Uh, if we have time, I can uh, discuss it as well. And uh, all code snippets, sorry. Just, uh, I don't understand why it's uh, working. <laughs> Okay, it's very hard to to understand uh, this. Uh, I, I will reshare my um, screen one more time because it's it's look like it's uh, live by his own life. I didn't um, current slide. Okay, I use several that can can show. Okay. Uh, before the presentation, let me ask you a question. Why should we unit test? Please write in the chat why you create test for your application. What are the most important reasons? While you are reading in the chat, while you are writing in the chat, let's remember the emergence of the test framework for the Java platform. Uh, we will start our story from 1998. Engineer Ken Beck experimented with various systems for automated testing, but none of them satisfied him. As a result, he wrote his own framework for the small talk language, which had only three classes and about 12 methods. The framework, which was named as unit, implemented a formula known as triple A, arrange, act, assert. This is a formula used through the X unit series of framework. A few years later, in 1997, Kent Beck and his friend Erich Gamma flew from Zurich to Atlanta for the OOPSLA conference. During the flight, they rewrote the S unit framework classes into Java. Thus, G unit one of the most popular test framework was created. The first version of GUnit had only basic set of features. In 2004, the test NG framework uh, started by Cedric Post offered a broader and more powerful range of functionalities than GUnit initially, keeping the same general concept. GUnit quickly closed the gap in a few years, and TestNG failed to gain the majority. In 2006, GUnit 4 was released, and the throne of GUnit has become, become undisputed. GUnit and TestNG share the same framework architecture, often called XUnit, and this approach to testing remained the same for almost 30 years. In 2009, developer Peter Niederleiser and Luke Daley proposed a different, revolutionary approach to automated testing. Spock takes all the years of automated testing experience and pain and reimagines how it should be implemented if you look at it from a different angle. Although Spock used the existing GUnit runner and it's fully compatible with his platform. By using Groovy, Spock introduced a new and expressive way of testing our Java application, which aren't possible in ordinary Java code. In 2017, a new version of the GUnit framework was released. Despite several technical improvements, such as support for new version of Java, parameterized test and the transi uh, transition to a modular system, the test structure remained unchanged. By this time, the Spock framework had gained a reputation as a stable and reliable framework for testing enterprise application. Many companies rapidly use Spock framework in their tech stack. Since 2018, Spock framework has been available out of the box for SAP cas uh, commerce customers. The 
current version of the SPOC framework is 2.3. It is a, an entirely mature framework that many company, companies use in their project for all test types, from unit and integration test to UI and browser automation test. So, it's time to return to our question. There are many reasons for using test. That's don't understand why it's trying to go to the next slide out of the time. Mariana, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe my computer wrong, but it's always trying to switch to the next slide. And I don't know, I don't understand how to prevent this. Uh, so it's time to return to our question. There are many reasons for using test, but on this slide, I highlight the three most significant, from my point of view, reasons to write test. The first reasons, test allow us to find problem early in development. The cost of fixing bugs increased for each stage during the Product life cycle. When unit tests are written, many bugs are found at the software construction page. Uh, maybe, maybe we can. Sorry, sorry for interruption, but maybe if we have some animations, maybe you can just show the presentation in PowerPoint, or we may just do quick export to uh, PDF and then show just uh, just the pictures. What do you think? Will 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 this help? Uh, I will try to reshare my screen one more time. Yeah, but I, I think the problem is in animation. So uh, yeah, let's 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 have a small talk here. So uh, could you please try to export your presentation to PDF, for example, and uh, then you will show just uh, pictures, so they will so they won't disturb you. I believe, with animation. I believe PDF is not a good option because we have a lot of animations there. Okay. Uh, okay. We just okay. Uh, Igor, just don't worry. Everything is okay. Just. Uh, Breathe and uh, uh, yes, the yes, uh, yes, share the screen. It was work fine. <laughs> yeah, the video, but it's sometime okay. I, I will try to reshare uh, the whole my screen and just uh, play for, for the current slide. It it's st uh, start automatically. I do nothing, but it's starting. Uh, it's crazy. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I will play, play share in this. Slide. Uh, sorry? Play from current slide. Yes, okay. I just share in this way. Maybe it's some uh, problem with um, uh, computer, I don't know. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, do you see it? Yeah. So, uh, the three reasons uh, for unit test, uh, the first is we can find problems early in our development. And uh, the second reason is, is preserve key behavior of our system. But uh, very important from my point of view is document, uh, is document our code. Our test uh, act as live documentation for our code and it helps us to uh, understand uh, what uh, classes interact uh, each with other. And uh, Spoke provide very good uh, tools, very good tools for uh, implementing this documentation. So the key benefits of uh, Spoke framework. Um, the spoke built on top of the groovy and uh, use, uh, uh, it's, uh, and also define its own uh, DSL, sp special language for uh, 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 spoke is an enterprise ready specification framework that built on the top of groovy. It enforces BDD as a core and ensure that all tests written using the framework follow the BDD conventions. Also, unlike JUnit, Spock has its own 
test doubles libraries and full support for parameterized test scenarios. Due to these, Spock specifications are super readable and expressive. As a result, they make the test achieve more and more of what it was intended for, reducing the cliche boilerplate code. Despite all of these fantastic features, Spock tests are runnable using the existing GUnit test runner and the existing command line build tools like Maven and Gradle, making it even more compelling. Uh, the next slide demonstrates the current position um, uh, status quo in Java ecosystem. When we need to write simple tests, we use GUnit 3, 4, 5, or TestNG with uh, a session library. However, when we need mocking, uh, we can't use GUnit. We have to add some additional libraries like Makita, EasyMock, or uh, G, uh, GMockit. And uh, if we need something special like uh, mocking final classes, uh, or as a private method, we use PowerMock. And on, on top of them, if we would like to uh, write our test in BDD style, we use GBehave or Cucumber. And uh, for each of these library, we have to learn its own specific API. And Spock uh, contains everything that we need uh, for testing purpose. This language uh, designed especially for test and we can uh, find everything what we need. Uh, now slide describes the technical, um, uh, how it uh, processes. Uh, we can write GNU test using Java or Kotlin or Groovy. Uh, and I did, uh, I write it genie test in all of uh, these languages. Then it compile it to bytecode and run uh, executed in Jupyter Engine on GUnit platform. Uh, when we use Spock, we write specification in Groovy language using the special uh, domain specific language. And it also compile it to bytecode but executed uh, in Spock Engine, also on top of GUnit platform. And uh, uh, one is the question, why uh, Spock decided to use Groovy language? Why not using Java? We uh, write our production code in Java. Why not using, uh, why not using Java for uh, test script? And uh, I would like to mention that uh, goals for production code and for testing sprint, uh, script absolutely different. Uh, and the biggest difference that test script run and executed before uh, production co code will be released. So, uh, as I told, Altru Spock uses different terminology. Uh, many of its concepts and features are inspired by JUnit. And in this table, you can see that uh, we uh, name uh, Spock class as specification. We have also fixture method like setup, clean up, setup specification, and clean up specification. All of these methods. Uh, uh, not static. Uh, it is different uh, to GUnit. In GUnit, for example, before class and after class should be static method, and you cannot inherit this method. But in Spock, it's possible to make uh, parent specification where you set up some databases or some common um, uh, mocking or stabbing and then inherit it and in child specification, you can use it. So let's uh, look at live examples of, of um, code in Spoke. And uh, for our examples, I use a coffee machine uh, project from JetBrains Academy. 
it's free available at Kotlin's uh, Kotlin track uh, uh, and uh, also I have a link to repository you can uh, take this code the first coffee machine in uh, written in Kotlin and the second in Java so I have two repository but uh, the first one it's um, more complete is the second one that I didn't complete to the... okay and um, this is how a project look like it's a very simple project actually we have control block with uh, several states and by objective of uh, the project um, I have to decide class that have uh, method process and uh, it take uh, input from the user and it have change, uh, have status. So uh, when it uh, in main menu state, if uh, receive some command, it switch it to buy coffee state, and it also can switch to fill water state, and so on. Uh, so uh, we decided to create new project, and. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, we use Java language and uh, I use Gradle for, for my building system. Uh, and uh, when I start this project, it automatically add uh, dependency for GUnit 5. So in the next slide, uh, I show how to add support for uh, Spock framework. Uh, this is our, our build file uh, for uh, initially created uh, by IntelliJ. We have to change uh, plugin from Java to Groovy. And the Groovy uh, plugin uh, extend for Java and include everything that we need uh, for Java. Also, I um, uh, use only one uh, dependency for Spock. And uh, this dependency also include uh, a GUnit platform. Uh, you can see that uh, I still use GUnit platform. So as the next step, we have to create special Groovy folder uh, to put our test because by default, uh, IntelliJ create Java folder but uh, spoke specification written in Groovy. So I create this folder and because I didn't, uh, I don't want to use uh, GUnit, I just delete Java folder for test. So we have Java folder for uh, our program and Groovy folder for test. So uh, let's go to the simple assertion and uh, uh, the support of uh, Spoke framework uh, um, in uh, IntelliJ have uh, very good support. Uh, Eclipse and all uh, major uh, integration development environment have support. You can see that uh, testing library is Spoke. Uh, we can uh, define setup and teardown, but it's not neat, and we just test very simple get price method. Uh, you can see that uh, IntelliJ automatically creates specification. Uh, now I um, write a minimum code for very simple uh, first specifications that check the price for Expresso. <sighs> Let's run this specification, see how it look like. It's uh, run successfully. So let's check this specification, uh, take a more close uh, look. Uh, you can see that we didn't uh, use uh, any annotation like test, no annotation here. Uh, but we uh, extend our specification from uh, parent class. Uh, coffee price specification, extend specification. It generated automatically by IntelliJ. The next, you can see that we can use plain English text for uh, name our test method. And 
uh, we use special uh, Java label. It's redefined by Spoke. It's uh, in its core. It's a regular Java label, but uh, Spoke redefine this label and everything after expect, for example, treated as a session. So Spoke automatically create um, a session for this. And uh, we use just operator without uh, any method name or special keyword. Okay, it's uh, good to check um, the simple session, but uh, it's very, uh, uh, oh, the next the next slide about, uh, you can see a different, uh, different variant, for example, uh, because Spoke use Groovy, uh, this uh, double equals is not comparing the object, but uh, uh, comparing by using method equals. If uh, we would like to compare uh, references to object, we can use uh, triple equal sign. Yes, this is comparing uh, references to the objects and this uh, calling uh, equals method. And it can be used for a uh, simple, uh, simple object, also for arrays, for maps, for uh, list. And uh, I would like to know the Spoke support all uh, Java libraries, including uh, Hamcrest. If you would like to use Hamcrest in and use Hamcrest in your code, you also can use it in uh, Spoke, but uh, no need to add asset Z uh, call of method. We can just use Watcher here. So uh, simple session is very good, but what uh, Spoke tell when uh, uh, test is failed? Uh, it's always interesting to see the failed test. So the ne our next test, we check uh, receipt for for Expresso. Um, in our program, uh, Coffee Expresso uh, consists from uh, 250 water and from 16 coffee bean. Yes. Uh, in this specification, I use second label where uh, this label uh, used primary for parameterized test, but uh, currently I use only one case, test case, uh, but I still uh, prefer to uh, use where label to separate test logic from uh, test sample data. So you can read this expect block uh, as uh, general coffee received should be uh, proper received, yes. So let's um, run uh, this um, code in uh, our idea and check uh, how it uh, executed, will be executed. So we see that currently um, Expressa has a correct receipt. Let's make some criminal and cheat the receipt and instead of 16 gram, we put 12. I know this is a very big criminal for some countries. Let's check how Spock react of, on this criminal. So the test fails. Let's uh, check what uh, Spock tell about uh, this situation. And uh, let's look more, clo more closer to this error message. You can see that uh, Spoke has a very detailed error messages. Uh, we um, have uh, link uh, and uh, all uh, internal state state of all object in all um, link of method call. And uh, by reading uh, this diagnostic message, we instantly find the cheating. Uh, the coffee received have 12 beans instead of proper 16. Uh, in many cases, um, the spoke diagnostic save hours of uh, developer uh, time uh, because uh, no need to start environment, start a debugging process and trying to understand the reason of uh, failed test because spoke diagnostic is very, very good. And this is one of the 
killing feature of Spock. So uh, next we go to the main labels given when and then. Uh, if you use BTD style in your project, you know, this is the um, most important word uh, to writing uh, rep uh, requirements and to writing specification. And Spock use this at, is, at, at its core. Uh, we describe in the given uh, our condition, our uh, starting condition, in when we perform some action and in then we check outcome of this action. And in the next slide, we can see uh, all the blocks uh, that used in Spock. Uh, as you see before, we already use uh, uh, expect and where. Let uh, read it all. Uh, the given is used to create initial conditions. Uh, the setup label is alternative name for given. And uh, in, in my presentation, I didn't use a setup, uh, but uh, I found some use it, but uh, many developer who use spoke prefer uh, to use given, when, and then. Standard keywords for BDD approach. Uh, when uh, triggers the action that will be tested, then examine the result of test and expect a simpler version of then. The expect doesn't require it when, but then requires the when. It's the first difference. The second, if we would like to test um, using mocking, we should use when and then because for mocking, we have to perform action in when uh, with this uh, mocking object and, uh, and as in then we, we can uh, test iteration. Uh, clean up uh, actually very rare, rare used uh, label because um, I usually use setup and clean up method instead of label, but in some, uh, some situation you can use it as well. And uh, the label where uh, mostly used for parameterized test and uh, as well it separate uh, test logic from the sample data. And the label end uh, can be used with any of uh, above uh, label to make uh, more clear uh, test. So, uh, Often uh, we need to test not only the happy path, but unhappy path when something uh, go wrong and we need to check uh, type of exception. Uh, here you can see that we use given. Uh, we create a storage block. It will be empty when it created and uh, in the next block expect, I just check this block is empty. Uh, when I trying to allocate resources for Expressa, but the block is empty, no resources, then I've got not enough resources exception. I can check this. And uh, the next topic uh, about data driving testing uh, for example, in the previous sample, I ch ch uh, test only for Expressa, but uh, our coffee machine uh, have three types of uh, coffee, Expressa, Latte, Cappuccino. And uh, in this scenario, I would like to test all of this recipe. So I create a general description beverage and uh, in a beverage block, I use uh, left shift uh, to connect uh, parameter beverage to data provider. In this case, uh, coffee is uh, enum class and coffee.values is just a regular array, array of uh, these enums. 
uh, and uh, this uh, test have uh, three iteration for each of type of coffee. You can see uh, that uh, in uh, method name, I use special uh, placeholder beverage. It will be substituted by uh, concrete beverage. Uh, let's uh, start, uh, let's check, uh, start it uh, in our program. Uh, when we run this test, we, see, uh, we will see this result. Uh, this placeholder replaced by concrete type of co coffee latte, cappuccino and espresso. So uh, this is more complex uh, example. I decided to uh, not only the test uh, exception type, but also I would like to test uh, exception message. And uh, in this custom exception message, a storage block also uh, put uh, the list of uh, required resources. So uh, I have uh, one, two, and three uh, tests in this scenario. And uh, when I try to allocate beverage, um, then I check that uh, correct type of exception was thrown. And this exception have correct uh, message. And uh, missing resources uh, have um, the same as uh, required resources. Uh, this is uh, groovy. Uh, equals uh, when we ignoring the order of elements in the list. And in where block, uh, I use data provider coffee values. And uh, this iterated and uh, iterated through all the coffee. And the next line, I just calculate required resources Based based on uh, beverage, it's not uh, uh, iteration, but for from uh, for each iteration, uh, it take receipt of this beverage. It's connected to the previous variable. Uh, extract uh, key uh, keys. Uh, this is spread operation in Groovy, and here I receive list of resources uh, to prepare beverage. And for beverage, I also need disposable cups. So I add uh, disposable cups. And uh, yes, and uh, this is how it's look uh, the whole specification. And uh, the next uh, uh, slide about uh, data tables. Uh, you can see I have slightly different syntaxes. Uh, uh, instead of uh, iterating from enum, I specify uh, here exactly coffee espresso, coffee latte, coffee cappuccino. And instead of calculating uh, these required resources, I just specify as a list. Uh, we have a very readable specification and uh, we can see all sample data. Uh, it's not located something uh, in different file or in C uh, CSV or in uh, method in a different class or in different place. All data in one specification. And uh, the secondly, uh, instead of placing um, uh, placeholder uh, here in the method name, I use special annotation unroll, yes. And uh, in this annotation, I create a separate template for all iteration. This will be common uh, name and uh, unroll will generate uh, name for each iteration. So if we run this, we can see uh, how it look like it's different uh, allocated resources for beverage when the storage is empty. For express, required resources are water, coffee beans, disposable cups.
for latte required resources are water, milk, coffee, beans, disposable cups. Everything go fine, everything green. So the next topic is uh, test doubles. And uh, uh, Spock has uh, built in uh, mocking and uh, uh, stabbing and spying libraries. And uh, let's look more close for this. Uh, we, display, uh, we define mock uh, for this specification. When we perform action, we check that uh, mock called one time display accept uh, prompt from main menu and uh, we trying to power on power on uh, our control unit so let's uh, check uh, let's explain this last line of uh, how we check uh, our mocking um, it consists from four parts cardinality, target constraint, method constraint, and argument constraint. And uh, let's uh, see different variants for cardinality. We can specify in one method call, zero method call, from one to three method call, from at least one and more, uh, no more than three method calls, and any, uh, uh, any uh, method calls from zero to any number. And uh, for target constraint, uh, we specify uh, our mock, or we can specify any mock that have method accept. And for method constraint, uh, we can uh, specify exactly method accept, or uh, we can specify regular expression. For example, um, in Spock, it's possible to check mocking uh, all the methods starting from set or all the methods starting from uh, safe, if we check repository. Also, any method and uh, any method, any number of arguments. And for argument constraint, uh, we can check that it's hello, transferred uh, hello to the argument. And uh, the next, uh, it's not hello, go to the display. Uh, it's uh, called method accept without parameter with uh, one single parameter with any number of parameters and uh, with something not null. Uh, the accept method call it with uh, something uh, of type string. Uh, here I used a Humcrest matcher. We can use Humcrest matcher as well. Um, uh, the display mock accept call it with something and and with law or it uh, more powerful we can uh, use um, a closure and uh, check everything uh, field everything we would like to check for example our mock uh, we um, uh, uh, test the method uh, which create order and the order object is very complex, have a lot of fields, and uh, we would like to check all of these fields, how it was created before saved to the database. And we can use this construction. And also we can com combine, uh, here is two constraints. The first constraint check that uh, type is string, and if it's true, it also uh, run this check. Strict mocking by default is uh, not strict uh, mocking in uh, Spock like in uh, Makita. Uh, and um, here we we check that uh, display mock was called one time. Uh, we allow any call for storage mock, any call, and no more call to any other mock. This is strict mocking. We uh, disallow any more calls. And for stabbing, uh, you can see uh, we can use almost the same. Uh, we define uh, stabbing here. And uh, for stabbing, we use uh, right shift operator. Uh, 
storage stop when we call for request for cache it returns something and money is defined in the where block it's just one test case but i extract it to where block to make test more general so you can read it uh, there is some money in the storage block a collector sent a request for cash withdrawal the amount of withdrawal cash is shown on the display and uh, you may ask uh, what this string are uh, this string uh, is not a comments it's uh, regular strings after the uh, after each label you can put a regular string and uh, if comment erased erased uh, during the compilation time uh, in spoke um, these uh, strings persist in the uh, in the bytecode and then can be extracted by any test report generator to generate uh, documentation and specification so when we use this uh, string we not only the make uh, readable our uh, source code but we can also, also generate the documentation. Uh, about stabling, uh, it's different um, different approaches. We can uh, return one parameter uh, if we need two calls. Uh, for example, our uh, uh, method uh, two times call volume, we can uh, specify 100 for the first call, 250 for the second call, or if it's a sequence of calls, we can specify array. Um, and also uh, we can true uh, some exception uh, and check how our method react on if uh, stabbing through an exception. Also, we can uh, compose, we can return 100 on, on the first call, the second call to the exception. And also we can use a matcher uh, when we make stabbing uh, as well as smoking and smoking also supports stabbing we can com combine in one uh, object and the next uh, topic is very important it's a test like documentation uh, here is um, some ticket we have to implement scenario replenish uh, resources for empty storage block and replenish resources for a fillet storage unit. We have two scenario and we have to uh, describe uh, this scenario in our uh, test. So, and this is how it's look in uh, uh, Spock. You can see this scenario of snakes. We just copy paste here. We use absolutely, almost absolutely the given, when, then uh, blocks as uh, in uh, requirements. And uh, it's very, very good because we speak uh, the same language as uh, business analytic. We describe our test in the same, in the same manner. And the second uh, is uh, for resources for fillet storage unit. We're trying to replenish resources to different cases. And um, on top of this uh, plain English test te text, we can use a different annotation in Spoke, like uh, title, narrative, issue, see, and tag. And um, uh, issue uh, connect uh, our specification to external tracking system. Let's uh, check um, it more closely. Uh, we see this annotation just describe user story. The technician replenish the resources in the storage unit. As a technician, I want to replenish the resources in the storage unit so that the coffee machine can prepare the coffee drinks. And uh, in issue, we specify um, number in Jira or in my, my case, it's the number in the GitHub uh, issue system. Uh, here I put um, link to Wiki, uh, my uh, re repository have a Wiki uh, for coffee machine, yes, and you can check all diagrams, how this process uh, consists, and uh, the developer, when open the test, uh, the developer have all uh, necessary information to understand what happened. He have link to Jira, have link to Wiki, 
uh, here I uh, specify subject uh, under specification storage block. I can use tech uh, similar like in GUnit uh, and uh, test uh, in Spock and in GUnit can be in the same uh, project. We, we can use together GUnit and uh, Spock test and they can share uh, the same uh, tags. Uh, here is the name of two our scenarios for empty storage unit and for fillet storage unit. It's differently. Yes, we, we check. And uh, uh, when we uh, run this specification, we can generate spoke reports and um, uh, to to use spoke record in build Gradle, I add uh, one more dependency spoke reports this dependency uh, if your project doesn't use um, a simple logging uh, logging facade uh, we should add it uh, here as well because spoke report also use this uh, simple logging facade and um, in test resource folder we can create spoke configuration uh, dot groovy and um, a lot of configuration parameter we can specify, including uh, parallel execution of test and so on. But here I specify only a minimum uh, for issue. Um, as you see on previous slide, I use only four for issue number, but Spock automatically add this link uh, to the issue number. So I can click uh, on my report and go directly to the Jira or something like this. So I run uh, a sanity test uh, in my IDE and after running, um, I, I got generated specification. You can see this is title from title uh, and all information and we can configure which one, uh, which information we would like to have and so on. If I click uh, for the specification, this is uh, for power on control unit. Let's make a closer look. Uh, this is title of specification or story unit, uh, uh, user story. Uh, this is a description of user story. Uh, uh, this is clickable link. Um, the spoke automatically generate URL. So if I click issue number 31, I will be pointing to the issue system in the Git, but it can be Jira or something uh, else. And this is linked to wiki page for more information. And I have uh, two scenarios, pressing the button uh, on non-working control unit and pressing the button on the operating control unit. So uh, when uh, we look at uh, this scenario, we have uh, see all the uh, label given when then we use in our uh, specification class. Also, the spoke extract strings from specification and generate uh, this documentation for us. Um, given a coffee machine control unit, expect control unit is switched off and doesn't work. When we press the power button on the control unit, then the control unit goes into working condition. And then the main menu prompt is shown on the display. And uh, the second uh, scenario, uh, when we test different operation state, for example, uh, the previous we test when the coffee machine is switched off, but in this scenario, we test uh, different uh, operational state, uh, like uh, in buy coffee, fill water, fill milk, and so on, and have a very descriptive uh, uh, report about this test. Uh, the second example about um, coffee receipt, I just uh, show how it look uh, uh, in, in uh, Spock Groovy and how it generated as a report. Coffee drink receipt and price. Uh, receipt for coffee and price for coffee. 
expect coffee receipt to meet specifications, the coffee drinks with correct receipt, and so on. So, uh, uh, conclusion, as uh, you see, uh, the spoke is uh, very different from G-Unit, and uh, it's maybe a very struggle when you first time uh, trying to use it, it uh, look uh, very uh, specific, but uh, when uh, I previously worked with GUnit 5 and testing G, I write a lot of tests. But when I learn about Spock and start examine it and start to use it, it's very hard to me to write test in GUnit because in Spock it look always much uh, more readable, much more clean, and uh, I use less code. Uh, because it good support for parameterized test, and it's a, uh, act as a very good documentation. So it's uh, all uh, for uh, for the presentation. We all already spent a lot of uh, time, so we have uh, maybe some minute for que a question, and uh, I will try to answer your question. Yeah, hello Igor, thank you for your amazing talk. Um, we have a lot of comments uh, actually, and one of my favorite is about uh, that um, no test for presentation lead for production break. <laughs> so next time we create more tests for our presentation. And um, uh, also, um, it was one uh, notice that uh, you are using white sim in your uh, IDA. Um, do you use it in your uh, normal life uh, while you're coding or just for presentation? <laughs> <laughs> the question very related to our uh, presentation. Yes. Uh, actually, I specifically switched to light TM to prepare slides. Uh, generally, I prefer dark them usually but uh, when i prepare the presentation i decided to to use slides at him all right also there are some expressions the spoke is really awesome uh, and uh, you got some colleagues from riga who also trying to use this uh, framework um what about questions? I know there is one amazing feature in uh, Spoke. Uh, it's pending feature. Uh, maybe you could tell us more. We have some time, and uh, you can yes. share it with us. Yes, I'm agree. Uh, let's uh, talk about this feature, uh, pending feature. And uh, before I talk about pending feature, I, I should uh, mention that uh, Spoke also include uh, conditional testing. We can use uh, ignore, ignore if, require, require if. Uh, the similar uh, as in testing G or G unit. Uh, for example, we can require some specific operation system or uh, some environment variable have to be set. I work in one project uh, that have uh, deployed the product to more than 100 countries and some countries have specific requ requirements and uh, um, some code have to work only for these countries. So uh, when we run test uh, in uh, environment, we check the variables and if it's uh, for Germany, we run test that it for Germany. This is normally used uh, for testing G and GUnit, and Spock it also have. But I would like to test uh, uh, talk about uh, pending feature. Uh, it's uh, a special annotation. For example, we would like to implement uh, fill method. Yes, uh, and method is not implemented yet. And uh, we would like to use TDD approach, uh, test driving development. So. Uh, for this class, um, I write, uh, for example, 
specification and mark this specification with pending feature. Uh, it's not disabled, uh, no implementation. I have no implementation at the moment. Yes, when I run this test, it test actually executed and it fails. But in case it fails, Spock ignore this test. This is normal behavior. And um, if I make implementation uh, and uh, test uh, successfully executed, uh, only in this case it it will fails uh, and shows that its feature is already implemented. Yes, uh, now run with pending feature. You can see that uh, all test cases passed, but uh, the main test it failed. Why? Because I required to delete this annotation at the mom uh, at this moment because I'm already implemented this. And now the test passed uh, successfully. Uh, in which situation it's uh, useful? For example, uh, you split your process in two stages. The first stage, you write test for requirements. Uh, you uh, make a pull request. Uh, you have review for your specification. Uh, from different people, uh, from QI engineer, from uh, business analytic, uh, uh, you discuss, okay, this specification is good. Yes, you write, uh, you, you, you created uh, correct specification. Uh, and then you merge this specification into the uh, development code. So you have test, but no implementation. With pending feature, uh, it is possible. And uh, a pending feature guarantee the test it run and it is read because in TDD, it's very important to be sure that you have a read test. The test is failed. Yes, when no implementation. And this annotation uh, guarantee make you confident. Yes, my test is uh, failed. And the second, uh, you discuss the specification, you, you can eliminate any possible uh, misunderstanding, any possible bugs. Um, uh, when you write specification be before you start implement the code, uh, you avoid it, you find the bug early by uh, communicating with business analytic, with uh, a requirement engineer who uh, makes the requirement when you write this specification. And uh, in the next stage, uh, when, you get, uh, get, um, when you get task to uh, make implementation, you have already uh, written test and it's very easy. Make implementation, then uh, test fails because you have to delete this annotation pending feature, you delete this annotation and make second commit with your implementation. Uh, so uh, this uh, software development life cycle in this step divided into two, two stages. The first stage, writing specification, uh, make review of this specification, uh, change all uh, misunderstanding or uh, something uh, if wrong, and af after uh, it's it's okay, it's merged, you can make implementation. It's a true test development approach. I see. Uh, thank you for this answer. So Roma, do we have some minutes? Uh, we have one more question. Yeah, sure. Chat. Exact time for okay. last question. Yeah, last question. Uh, can we say that Spock is one-stop shop for testing? Besides, how do you see the popularity trend of Spock framework? Uh, look, the Spock is the youngest uh, framework uh, among those test ng and G unit. And uh, if you check how many contributors uh, right now, you can see that test ng, G unit, and uh, Spock has more than one hundred contributor. Uh, and uh, if you compare uh, stars, it's um, almost the same spoke and uh, G unit, and um, uh, more than three thousand uh, for spoke 
and 1800 for test ng uh, test ng if i correct yes so, uh, so by stars it's uh, developer uh, make many stars for uh, spoke framework even it's less much less popular in uh, production it's uh, not uh, so popular but everybody who start using it uh, very like it and uh, make stars and use it and it's very actively developed right now it's uh, you can see that it's uh, very actively and it's more than 10 years on the market it's uh, already used by many companies and uh, it's very metal very good framework all right so we are out of time and uh, guys we are glad you to invite our discord uh, session where me and Igor will be available for uh, some time and uh, we can continue discussion about this amazing um, framework and yes uh, thank you so thank you thank you very much Igor <laughs> thank you very much for your great talk I saw huge reactions in the chat so really cool uh really cool that guys like this framework and I saw the comment that somebody used this framework from 2009 so that's kind of kind of amazing kind of kind of huge time so thank you very much for information Mariana thanks a lot for moderating this session